The pioneering disability campaigner Lord Morris of Manchester has died at the age of 84. As Alf Morris, he was Labour MP for Withenshaw for many years and Britain's first minister for disabled people. This morning, the Labour leader Ed Miliband said he would be greatly missed by the millions of people who benefited from his achievements. Our political correspondent Ross Hawkins looks back at his life. Alf Morris's future was forged in the horrors of the First World War. His father, a sign writer, lost a leg and an eye serving his country and returned unemployable. His country offered him little in return. Well, I'm grateful to Minister. Alf, later Lord Morris, grew up to change the rules for disabled people and the way they're seen by the rest of society. Under Prime Minister Harold Wilson, he became the first minister for disabled issues, but he's remembered not for a job title, but for the legacy of a bill. He promoted legislation that in 1970 gave disabled people the right to get into buildings, a change that altered the face of many high streets. It entitled them to help in adapting their own homes and access to crucial services outside their doors. I think Alf's greatest contribution was he totally transformed the way people in Britain see people with disabilities. Um, he, he changed the law and that was great in itself and that gave uh, real legal rights, but actually in changing the law, Alf helped to change the way people saw the whole issue of disabilities. Later generations of politicians didn't forget his contribution. Before the act, no one even counted the number of disabled people in need. Afterwards, things were different. Lord Morris didn't believe his act had solved every problem he'd seen as a boy, but a few days before the start of a London Paralympic Games that will see disabled people compete in sold-out venues, he could believe that he'd helped change Britain. Ross Hawkins, BBC News. Lord Morris of Manchester, who died today. Um, he was very much a pioneer. He was a, ahead of his time. Um, the fact that he was even thinking about civil rights for disabled people in 1970, when other people thought that, that disabled people should be shut away in hospitals, was quite revolutionary in its, its ideas. Because I think it's perhaps difficult for us today to remember just how different the culture was in those days in terms of the attitudes of the population more widely to disabled people. Do you think that he did really manage to change that? He, he certainly did change attitudes and very often it was the attitudes of disabled people themselves. He was the, the um, architect of what we now know as the disability living allowance um, when he brought in um, the mobility allowance which, um, which he did when he became the first ever Minister for Disabled People in 1974 and I, I got um, applied and, and got um, mobility allowance in 1976 when I was an impoverished student. It certainly opened my world out and allowed me to, to be able to move around and afford a car. He then brought in the motability scheme and again I was one of the first to get a motability car that again opened up the opportunities that I would have. I was still fighting to become a teacher and I was having to fight um, the, 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 the doctor at the college to allow me to become a teacher but Alf was working in Parliament as a Minister for Disabled People to give people like me the opportunities that we were able to take, um, take full advantage of. Just reading the comments from some of our audience are pointing out the changes that are happening at the moment in terms of benefits to disabled people. Do you think that he would recognise the need to make those changes or is that something that he might have brought his fa famous campaigning skills to bear upon? <laughs> well, I think he already has taken, uh, taken his, his famous campaigning skills in the House of Lords and speaking out against some of the changes that were in the Welfare Reform Act. And, of course, what was in that act is um, to do away with disability, a living allowance of which he was so proud, and to replace it with a new benefit that's going to be called PIP, or Personal Independence Payment. But even the new benefit still recognises what ALF was the, um, laid down in the original legislation was that disabled people people have extra expenses in order to live their lives, um, in order to share um, and live in society along with everyone else, they've got those extra expenses and the welfare system should recognise that. That was the basis of disability living allowance and that is still there in the, the new allowance but obviously there are a lot of disabled cam disability campaigners um, don't see why it, there couldn't have been reform of, the, of the, the, the existing DLA and there was no need to bring in something which was, was completely new. OK, Dame Anne Begg, thank you very much indeed for talking to us.
Good afternoon to you, Liz. Good afternoon. Um, just looking uh, at what he achieved there, we're just running through a, a, a bit of that. I mean, we have to remind ourselves that he not only changed laws and brought in new practices and legislation, he changed the way people treated people with disabilities and looks at them. I think he was, uh, he was all about freedom and opportunity for disabled people. He had a vision, you know, in the 70s it was a time when a lot of disabled people were shut in institutions, disabled kids didn't even get a proper education. He saw that it could be different. And now we have so many more disabled people who are MPs, who are business leaders, all kinds of things. And he, owes, he deserves a huge amount of credit for that. Uh, the timing of his death is slightly ironic, isn't it? Just, just ahead of the uh, Paralympics as well. And that perhaps epitomises how, perhaps not just in Britain, but in the wider world, uh, he has changed how people with disabilities are treated and created more opportunities. I, I think he's been an absolute giant in the disability rights movement. And, and those of us working for, for dis disabled people's equality and rights really just need to build on his work now you know uh, with the Paralympics we've got a government that's developing a disability strategy as we speak you know we hope that that will be something that is worthy of Alf Morris that he would be proud of and we just want to build on all the fantastic work that he's done because disabled people are still more likely to live in poverty still don't have freedom and opportunity but heavens did he take things a long way he moved mountains well that that leads me very nicely to my next point uh, how missed is he going to be because interestingly he was fighting uh, the current government from the House of Lords over their proposed changes to disability allowances I mean just how much is he still needed absolutely I think that you know w we need campaigners and people fighting those battles inside Parliament and outside Parliament and he's been a stalwart inside inside the Lords we have others in the Lords who will I'm sure pick up the mantle and in the House of Commons who just want to see a good and fair opportunity for for all disabled people to play a full part in society that's what he believed in and it's what we believed in and what we believe in and it, it's what we will achieve um, but without him well, we, we've lost a real pioneer and a, 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 a real innovator, actually, somebody who had a, a real vision for a different future. Uh, Liz Sayce there, the Chief Executive of Disability Rights UK. Thank you for your time. Thank you.